So this is only my second charcuterie board I've ever made. I got this meat from Aldi. Majority of my stuff is gonna be from Aldi, just heads up. <laughs> this hot dry salami is from Aldi as well as this prosciutto. And I got this variety three pack of different hot or spicy uh, salami and prosciuttos combined from Aldi. I love this variety pack of cheese and of course it's from aldi you got white cheddar havarti gouda and asiago so it's a really nice pre-sliced pack they also have a normal version of cheddar jack swiss cheddar and pepper jack cheese and i got this mozzarella just to kind of have something a bit more fresh uh, but it's kind of watery so we'll we'll do with that later And this is a garlic and herb cream spread that I got from Target. Aldi has one that is a cucumber dill spread that I love. It's so good, but they sell out so quickly. I went to two Aldis and tried to find it, but I had no luck. So then I went to Target and found something a little similar. It was very good, so great replacement. And I have some raspberries, strawberries, and some grapes just to have some fresh fruit on my board and these pita crackers are from aldi they are so bomb i don't know they just really did that got some generic uh crackers just you know basic and some clubhouse crackers just like to have a variety i got this onion chutney from aldi it's like right across the meats and cheeses like they have a whole section that sets you up for success <laughs> um this honey for cheese i got from target and it's really good i mean it tastes like regular honey but i feel like maybe they did a little something different because it really slaps and i got this dijon mustard from target i have not used it on a charcuterie board yet but i want to kind of add something new this time So this is my board that I got from Home Goods. It was about $15 to $20, maybe like $17. Let's go with that. And I also went back and found these a few days later that were two for one and they were $14 or I don't know, a pack of two, $14. They were like taped together. And I thought they were so cute, a nice little side table. And I don't know if I'm going to use both. So I'm just going to leave one for the dips and sauces and decide on the other one later. I also got some gloves because I feel like don't nobody want me touching all over the meat and cheese and fruit while I'm preparing it. Like, of course I wash my hands, but just to keep it nice and clean and not contaminate everything, <laughs> let's put on some gloves. So I'm starting with cutting up my strawberries. And I'm just going to put them in a little side bowl just to store them until I'm ready to place them on my board. Just giving them a quick rinse and I don't do anything special when I cut them just put it and cut it into four equal parts and I cut up maybe half a container of the strawberries for this board and I bought a lot of ingredients but what I love about all the meats and all the cheeses and all the fruit I literally only use half of all the ingredients to make one board because of the size and then that gives me a whole extra half of ingredients to make a board for another group of friends or with my family so it's i would say i spent 50 dollars total on all this stuff and i know it's silly it's just meat and cheese <laughs> but it's really a great just way to host just get some wine and some 
cheese and crackers and fruits and just snack talk about your day so it may seem like a little silly adult lunchable but it's really don't knock it till you try it it's really nice So now I'm all done with my strawberries. I am just going to set them off to the side and move on to cutting up my cheese. I do change the gloves be between each item, whether that be fruit or deli slices or cheese, just so it doesn't get all strawberry filled. So this is a new cutting board and now I'm going to cut up some of my cheese. And honestly, this one's very difficult with deciding when it's on the board because they all look the same. So I have no clue which is which, to be honest. And I only take about three per section because there are six in this container for all the cheese and I don't need all that, that's way too much. So this is what I was talking about when I said I have twice the amount of ingredients that I can save for another time. So these are really long, I just cut them in half. And on to the next selection of cheese. This one I noticed had eight or seven of each, unlike the other one that had six. So with this one, I took like a little extra one or two per, per variety of cheese. And luckily with this type of cheese, I know exactly which, what, which one is. And we're just going to do the same thing, cut those in half so that they are easier to share. If you want to go crazy, you could even cut it into triangles. Might do that next time, but the square is good enough from experience. So I'll just move the cheese out the way for now. And I like to start with my meats as the foundation, sort of, <laughs> when I'm making my board. And just a little side note, I'm rinsing off my raspberries and grapes just so that they're ready for the board. Rinsing off the grapes now. And as I said, I like to start with the meat. Specifically, I like to start with the prosciutto because I don't know, I feel like it's so thin and it gets kind of hidden and drowned. And it's no good way. I mean, I maybe could roll it up next time, but it's just a nice foundation piece. I'm just gonna leave it with that. <laughs> nice and flat so i'm just going to put like maybe three in one corner and then three in another corner and i will say this is probably one of my favorite type of meats that i had on the board i kind of layer it want it to be a bit loose so that it's easy to pick up And now repeat directly across. I try not to let the prosciutto drape over so that it's not like sitting on my counter. Make sure everything 
On the board is only on the board. And now we're gonna put down some of the cheese. And there's no real logic to this. Just do whatever your heart desires. That's why I really love making these. Every board is different, unique. Just a nice way to be creative with foods. I do like to spread out the cheese and like for instance with the pepper jack and all of these, I have about eight slices of each but I don't want to put all eight in one spot. Kind of like to put half on one side, half on another, so everybody can reach it. That's kind of the only logic, I guess, to where I place. And the cheese, I'm just showing that I'm not putting it on the board. I may have it on the little side wooden charcuterie board, or I may have it on a plate. I don't know. Here I am opening up some of my other salamis. They all look the same. <laughs> Honestly, I think they may have all tasted the same, but they were good. I try to like lift them apart so they're not all stuck together like they were in the package. Lifting up my cheese over here in the corner and squeezing that underneath. Just gonna repeat that all over. It reminds me of like a deck of cards. Like when they real new and they all stuck together and you kinda gotta air them out a little bit. I still got both of these salamis. So, I definitely bought a lot. <laughs> But I love the variety, so go crazy. With the spicy salami, I like to kind of fold it and roll it up just so it looks nice and fun. However, they don't just stay in place. So this is where the fruit comes in. I will say when I make these boards, again, this is only my second, but I'm kind of all over the place. My brain is like, oh, I want this, I want that. I want to put this here, I want to put that here. But you have to kind of have things supported and spaced out. So this is where the grapes come in. You see, I'm not placing all my cheese and all my meat and then all the crackers. I do it all back and forth to fill it up but I like to put the grapes down midway because they add a little bit of support and structure meaning I can squeeze the folded up salami between some cheese and some grapes <laughs> I feel like this is a crazy voiceover but it was so loud in my kitchen when I was explaining it because my dog was barking and stuff so I'm just talking crazy, basically.
So now I'm going back to folding up some of that hot salami and sticking it between my grapes and cheese. Now I'm throwing in a little more fruit, some raspberries, and some strawberries. I do try to put the fruit in the middle so that it doesn't roll over to the side off of the board because the meat and cheese is a little more solid. They won't roll. They can kind of be an anchor on the edges. My big old blue gloves are in the way, but <laughs> just sticking in some more salami different places. Now I'm putting just a few crackers and with me I don't think the crackers are the main attraction or main centerpiece on these boards they kind of just like a side note meaning like the main focus is the cheese and the meats and the fruit so I don't want to cover my board with all these crackers that are ginormous taking up all the space <laughs> so I literally only put about 20 crackers total on my board and this is the second time i've done that and i feel like the the crackers you can just put on a little plate off to the side in this case i do have an extra charcuterie board round wooden little table so i could always just put more crackers on that because it's much prettier when your board is filled with more interesting things to eat I like how I did in the front with the little roll <laughs> salami. That was new. I didn't do that last time. You see, I still got some cheese to place to squeeze in where I can. So I don't know why I was trying to put that folded salami over here in the corner with nothing supporting it. Because I know I needed some grapes or something to hold it down. <laughs> they kept unrolling and it was just so frustrating.
sometimes you gotta like you bury something too much and you kind of gotta like bring it back out from under the trenches I thought I was doing something with that one. And I had to come back to this one because it just wasn't hitting how I wanted it to. So I just kind of stuff it under some cheese. <laughs> With all the stuff on this board, it's honestly so filling. You'll be surprised how full you get off of some salami and fruit and cheese. So I have a bunch of things that I prepared for this board that are extra and I am just bringing them in little Ziploc bags and gonna put that in a side little tote just in case we eat all of this and we want a little bit more. <laughs> Because I don't know what my friends will like the most, that they're like the strawberries or the grapes or the raspberries. So I'm just bringing whatever is extra and little bags. I 
throwing in a little bit of grapes also so that's my extra fruit that I'm bringing and I did need a bag as well for my cheese and some of my salamis I mostly brought a lot of the hot salami that I was trying to roll up everywhere and of course some crackers because I didn't actually put any on the board <laughs> so I'm putting a nice amount of crackers in all my bags this one I'm bringing the whole box because that's how good they are it's a bunch in there I know we will like these the most And I didn't even put any club crackers on the board, so I'm just bringing a whole roll of those. So here's all my extra salami. Not too much, but just in case. I, do, I don't like to take a, too much of the salami because I need that for the other board. But that's my extra cheese that I will bag up. They all look the same, but it's all good. So here's all my extras that will go in a little Walmart bag. And just so you can get a little preview, this is where I'm putting my sauces, or dips, whatever you want to call it. Definitely called a dip. And one thing I love to have is toothpicks. Because you can just take however many you want, grab your stuff without touching all over everything, or using something ginormous like a, a fork I don't know they have specific charcuterie tools but I did not buy any because I spent enough on this and I didn't really have huge blocks of cheese like parmesan or something of that sort where I needed to cut the cheese off the block my cheeses were already sliced by me so I didn't really need no dramatic tools but here we are with the finished product. It's honestly so beautiful. Like, it's an art piece. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's so vibrant, so colorful, so fresh, and delicious. Like, why would you not want to eat this or make one of these? Well, I mean, I guess if you're vegan, vegetarian, but anyways, point being, this is perfect to host, have a group of friends together, and it's just a nice, creates a really nice atmosphere. So I almost forgot I do have to actually pack this up somehow <laughs> and transport it over to my friend's house. Luckily she only lives 15 minutes away so I don't have to drive very far but I still need it secure enough to stay beautiful and not mess up. <laughs> so the only thing that made logical sense was to use 
some foil and I'm trying not to smush it because I don't want everything to just mess up And I did, as you notice, I put the foil underneath the existing one so that it wasn't just, you know, perfectly meeting the other foil, if that makes sense. So as you can see, I am just completely smothering this in as much foil as I can. And it worked. It arrived perfectly without any issues. I didn't drop it. So my friend got all this wine from Cooper's Hawk. And another friend brought another bottle of Stella Rose. So it was a great night. They absolutely love the board. This is actually all we ate for dinner. <laughs> this the crackers as you can see we got another panel my friend had that charcuterie board that we used for the crackers and it was so beautiful great night great little snack turned into a dinner <laughs> so i hope you enjoy making one of these as much as i did thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video